everybody, this is Gary Vaynerchuk from Wine Library TV and again, we're in this more conservative, kind of toned down interview style that we're trying. Uh, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. We've gone through a series of guys. We've talked uh, a lot about the Iron Sheik and a lot about wine kegs and about Sauvignon Blanc. But now we have the best dressed guy of the bunch. I'm very impressed with the attire. And he's also brought Zin from Russian River. We're gonna get into that in a second. But uh, I'm gonna let him introduce yourself. Why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you are and what, what you're doing. Yeah, sure, my name is Jeff Muncy and I'm with Pithy Little Wine Company. Pithy wine Little company. Wine Company. Pithy Little Wine Company. How'd you come up with that name? Well, my wife and I decided when we were creating our wine business that uh, we wanted to focus on the consumer and, and while very elaborate, um, almost overly romantic wine notes are fabulous, we feel it's easier to talk to people about wine in very concise and simple terms. Sure. So uh, the word pithy fit perfectly for that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. So take, take me back. Why are you in the wine business? Was this something you grew up with? Uh, you know, give me a little bit of the backstory. How did you, you and your wife get here? Sure. My wife went to school at Cal Poly uh, San Luis Obispo for uh, crop science and viticulture, wow. and uh, as a third generation family farmer. I see. Um, and we happened to meet uh, in uh, at a winery one weekend. I used to work for Disney down in Southern California and buy wine. So uh, no kidding. Yeah, while visiting San Barbara Wine Country, uh, we went out to dinner and. You saw this gal and you're like, I like what I'm seeing? Well, actually the owner of the winery figured it was easier to sell wine to guys if they brought some uh, good looking talent along. So <laughs> he, Love it. he grabbed her and a couple of her friends and they joined us for uh, dinner where we talked about wine and just hung out and had a good time. And no kidding. Everybody else at dinner was hitting it off. We were over doing our own thing. Re rewind me for a second. You were at Disney buying wine? Disneyland, yes. So you were the wine, you were wine buyer for part of some restaurants, the whole yeah, thing? There, or what um, were you doing at the There's time? a private club in New Orleans Square called Club 33. Sure. And I was one of the managers there. And Got it. Worked for a wonderful wine mentor who at the time was very green with wine and he said, I'm going to send you out uh, all throughout California to, to learn everything you need to know about California wine. And Interesting. He set me up with wonderful, Where did you grow up? People. Uh, Southern California. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so several years ago, I moved up to uh, Central Coast, uh, San Luis Obispo. Just got tired of the rat race in Southern California in the big corporate setting, and uh, uh, went to work as a general manager of a family winery. And from there, which one? Uh, called Sunstone. Oh, I know it very oh, well. Yeah. Oh, I know it super well. Mm. Yeah, I used to buy. They had a red blend, right? What? Uh, Eros. Yeah. Yeah, I used yeah. to buy that. Did you ever run to a guy by the name of Stephen Alshuler? Does that yeah, it sounds very familiar, yeah. Yeah, so I used to buy a ton of that. I used to buy a lot of that wine. Okay. So, okay, Good so you, Yeah, it was. So you, so you were there for a while. Yeah, so uh, eventually my wife and I decided that uh, why it was very fun working in a, for a large family winery. and uh, that, Where did she work? Uh, she actually was a teacher and still does teach part-time first graders. Um, she nice. got out of the grape Sisters side of the business. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so now what we, the farming she tends to now is our other family farming businesses, which include prunes and rice and... Things that aren't as exotic as wine grapes, but right. they uh, certainly Pain grow bills. well. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So you make money there and you lose in the wine business, right? Absolutely. absolutely. So let's talk about your wine. Sure. So here it is, uh, the pithy little wine company, I love that, uh, Zin, 2007 from Russian River, 13.8 alcohol content. Um, what vintage did you guys start this? Uh, the first wines that we made go back to 05 vintage. Okay, so only a couple years now. Mm -hmm. Not very long. Uh, okay. Although, in our plan, what we do is we make a little and we make a little more each year. So you're being conservative about it. You're not trying to be too obnoxious and make too much and get caught. Well, correct. It's, the goal is to keep it fun. Right, not pressure. <laughs> so how much are you making at this point? Um, between the uh, two brands that we make, we're doing about 2,500 cases. And so when you say two brands, what mm -hmm. else? Uh, in addition to these wines, we make a brand of products that will come out this summer called Fortuity. And uh, it's a Merlot and Chardonnay, and they're designed for the wholesale market. Uh, price points $14 and $18. Got it. And so why was Zinn the first varietal? Is that something the passion of your guys or the best opportunity you thought? Or, or well, you I, just had the best shot at, you know, the best quality grapes you were able to get were here? What, what it, kind of made that choice? Interest and opportunity kind of cross. Um, we look all throughout the state, and still a lot of the relationships that I developed when I worked at Disney and a lot of the relationships my wife has from folks that she met, uh, while going to Cal Poly and, and working in Napa um, in the vineyard uh, gives us the opportunity to look at lots uh, throughout the state. So a lot of times we'll look at, in a forward-looking way, where and what are people going to be drinking in the years ahead because we sure. certainly want to make something people want to drink. And uh, uh, where is the greatest opportunity to get the finest grapes sure. at a, an affordable price? So the wines that we ultimately release uh, reflect a, a sense of uh, uh, honesty uh, with, uh, the, to the consumer with respect to what we charge. What price point is this? This is $33 a bottle. Got it. And, and it's and uh, 150 cases. Super small. Yeah. And crazy fruit on the nose. Yeah. I mean, like over the top, like candy esque, like big, big, big fruit on the nose. Yeah. 
Are you selling most of this direct to consumer or are you selling this in a restaurant tour? What, with only 150 cases, what's been the retail attack on it? Uh, this is our, the Black Label Reserve wines uh, go 95% direct to consumer, uh, larger through our taste. So you have a mailing list? list. Um, a very small one, actually, where we cultivate a lot of our interest in our wines is through social media, through Twitter and Facebook. And, I've heard and, of those and, things. And a little bit, I bet you have, right? Uh, in, a, in a slightly uh, more uh, intimate version. Organic way. Yeah, Real. You're, you're actually Real. interacting with my wife or with myself, and, and we try to be authentic. So. I love that. Thank you. So how long have you guys been doing that? Um, my wife began the process of kind of seeding our social media stance uh, about three years ago. Oh, really? And, Super uh, early. I'm a late adopter mm -hmm. um, because... Did you, uh, think, did you think she was out of her mind? No, we had a conversation you about years ago. You knew at this ago. point that your wife was so much smarter well, she, than <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Now, we, we, at the time, we, we asked ourselves, or it was our uh, opinion, was that it was probably going to be a way to cultivate interests with people that are distributors of information, i.e. wine bloggers, wine writers. And what we found is while that is the case, we're also reaching out to Direct -to wonderful customers yeah. who are in a sense vetted because they've already investigated sure. who you are sure. and now they're interested. So sure. we're developing really Good, you know, authentic relationships. I mean, listen, fun. for guys and gals of your size, it's such a natural way to build a business in today's world. Yeah. That's really, really neat. I mean, something obviously very close to my heart. So. Thank you. Um, so what are you excited about going forward? By the way, this is quite nice. Uh, let me just say on, on a note for everybody home, for all its hugeness on the nose, and it's a very big aromatic bomb. I was, and he's such a nice guy, I was like a little hair concerned <laughs> that it was gonna be too over the top for me. But the flavor profile doesn't necessarily match the nose for me. You mm. know, the nose is quite big, and right. I thought it was gonna be one of these two over the top zins. Right. But the, the flavor profile is much more controlled on the palate Am I wrong? Is this something you're seeing at this point? Is no. that something, is that a style? Where, or is it just young and that kind of will change? Because for me, the nose is up here and the, and the flavor profile is much more controlled and balanced, which is something I like. Mm -hmm. and I think it, when we produce our wines, our ultimate goal is um, balance and really just soft drinkability. So uh, fresh out of the bottle, the nose on this is probably wide awake. Yeah. Um, but all of our wines, uh, we try to fashion them in a way that we end up with a nice, smooth, um, well drinking uh, balanced product because the goal is that no one particular element of the wine drives the experience. It should just be something you drink. You know, wow, I mean, it's a nice. very fascinating category and that makes sense. I mean, you're talking about a category that was, I mean, literally when I was a young, young wine buyer buying 94 Zins, you know, I was naive and this was where, and not, actually, you know what? Nothing for nothing, I wasn't naive. This is where the consumer was. Mm -hmm. Literally, people would walk through my door and say, what's the highest alcohol zin you have? <laughs> I mean, that was a real thing yeah. in the late 90s. I mean, literally the Martinelli, the Turley phenomenon, the brown zins. I remember I had a Sparrow Lane zin <laughs> that was like 16% and everybody just thought that was the greatest thing of all time. But looking back and rewinding in my mind, I mean, these wines were just too over the top and didn't mm -hmm. have the balance. This has a lot more of that balance. And I think zin, when balanced, because of its natural fruit mm -hmm. components, tends to get quite interesting. Yeah, we, it's funny, we still have a lot of people to this day that will come in and they, before they look at anything else on the bottle, they look at the alcohol content. Right. And they almost begin to dismiss it because it's not over 15. Right. And they want to ask, well, what's wrong with it? And I said, what's right. wrong with it? Well, it doesn't have the guts. We or just why want you to be able to smell it because then you're going to How about the fact it. that you want them to drink more than one glass? <laughs> well, exactly, right? Hello. <laughs> so, so here you are in the process. What's been the biggest surprise being in the actual wine business on this side for you in the first couple of years of production? Um, that even with the economy the way it is, that if you endeavor to develop real honest relationships with your customers and that you truly do care. And, and by that I mean we put our heart into everything, whether it's the wine or the package design, um, the, the website design. I mean these are things that we do every day and we're trying to convey a, a, uh, uh, an entire experience uh, that comes together to support uh, you know, ultimately the wine being good. And uh, even with the economy the way it is, if, if you develop those wonderful relationships and people discover you and, and you welcome them in, um, you can still make a, a reasonably small a amount of wine and be successful yeah. um, uh, within the scale of success you want. Sure. And for us, that's um, being able to take a couple trips to Hawaii each year. So <laughs> I can't, for you. can't really complain past that. Good for you. Good, good for you. you. Well, Thank you. Well, well, you know, I'm, I'm having a good time. You're charming me here. What, what in the next five years would you like to see happen? Well, what we're in the process of developing is a uh, kind of an overall wine and lifestyle company, something that uh, reflects. Does that mean, I'm sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. do you think you'll have products outside of wine eventually? Yeah, we actually already do. Um, we are already producing uh, Chardonnay soaps. 
Um, we're working on other spa products, but one of the things I think that I'm, I'm really most excited about that we make, and I've brought some for you we can try later today, is uh, we make our own um, old-fashioned sodas. Oh, crap. Um, which, do you have a root beer? Yes, I do. Oh, crap. And it began oh, because within our tasting room, I was always disappointed when people would come to wine country, and if they weren't a wine drinker or they, they couldn't drink, drink, they had nothing to drink. And Good so we have you. people come in and sit down in the same Riedel stand where we can taste our wine and be able to taste root That's beer and really black cherry and orange cream soda. So. You guys seem to come from a very, you know, you're passionate about the product, but you do seem to come from a very entrepreneurial place. Mm -hmm. um, is that both of you? Is that you? Is that her? Or, or is it? Uh, it? It's two worlds that come together really well. My wife, as I said, third generation family farmer, mm -hmm. family she business she's got oriented. The shops in that. Exactly. Yeah. And me on the, I grew up more in the corporate, Marketing, follow the rules yep. setting, and, and you now you get team. this convergence. Balance. Yeah, you get this balance. convergence of balance. and. And uh, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. Not everything we do is a winner the first time it comes out, but um, That's you know, fun. It's, it's our own. Sure. Yeah. And you can. Uh, what I would say is great. Is the business our scale is on Tuesday. If you have a great idea by Wednesday afternoon, you can deploy. No it. question. Yeah. And coming from the corporate world, you must love that. <laughs> oh, I, I love it altogether. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate Take care. it.